everybody. Welcome to another segment of My Child, My Voice Parent Connection Show. My name is Wendy Gonzalez Neal, and this show is sponsored by the National Parents Union. I'm so excited for our guest today. Um, again, I'm Wendy Gonzalez Neal. I'm the executive director and founder of uh, My Child, My Voice here in Houston, and also the Texas delegate for National Parents Union. Our show is to connect parents and caregivers like you everywhere with uh, information that uh, would help you with your child's education. I hope everybody's had a good day today, being you know a day here in Houston. It was a hot day. <laughs> um, before I go ahead and introduce my wonderful guest, I wanted to give you some updates in Texas specifically. First of all, on a national level, the National Parents Union uh, Parent Power Convening is Saturday, May 15th with our very special guest, Dr. Bernice King. We're excited for our guest. Uh, this is an invitation only event, families. If you're interested in going and being part, you need to have what we call a golden ticket. Uh, if you'd like to get a golden ticket from me, please email me at wendy at npuunion.org and I'm happy to get you that link so that you can join us on the convening. It is going to be a powerhouse convening. Uh, next thing that I wanted to talk about real quick in Texas, we have the Texas Star testing. Um, this has been a hot topic here in Texas. Um, it's reported, and this is back on April 7th, that um, it's online testing is unacceptable right now. They're having some issues. <laughs> but, you know, um, there is a lot of controversy here in Texas. A lot of parents are against the star testing as well as some teachers. Um, but uh, there has been representative puberty that had pushed this to make sure that we can try to do online due to the COVID. So we are waiting to see, but they're actually stating um, that the online standardized testing will be pushed back till 2022 school year. Um, so we will stay tuned and see what happens with that one. I, I think Texas is making a move on going digital. So that's a plus. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the next thing on the COVID vaccine in Texas, according to the Texas Department of Health Services, there has been over 500,000 doses of Johnson & Johnson vaccine that has been administrated in Texas. Um, but it has been reported nationally that there's been blood clot cases. There hasn't had any cases here reported in Texas. Governor Abbott made an announcement today stating that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, they're putting a temporary pause on that for right now because they want to think of everybody's um, safety and health. They don't want anything to happen. So that is being on pause. So thank you, Governor. Um, and if you want more information, just follow, like as I mentioned, the Texas Department of Health Services. And I can put that in the comment field in a few minutes. Now, the big other topic here in Houston is the HISD superintendent search. Um, that is a hot topic here. Um, the search firm that said that they were, had put out what they call a survey and um, they want community input. And so I am calling out to all of parents out there. You want your voices heard. You want to hear these changes. You want to know like what do you want to see in the next superintendent for Houston Independent School District? Guess what? This is your chance to actually speak up and say something. Um, I will put this on there. What they're saying is right now they only have 475 survey responses. So I'm hoping everybody it is only five questions. Yes, I did do it. So I hope that everybody else does fill out the questions. What do you see? What do you, would you like to see in the next superintendent? Please take the survey. I will have this in the comment field so that you can look at this. Like I mentioned, five questions, five minutes. That simple. <laughs> really quick on the Texas 87th legislative bills. We had talked at our last um, updated segment of My Child, My Voice, Parent Connection. We talked about several bills. Now, one of the bills I did bring up was Senate Bill 1968, which is Family Educational Relief Program Bill. That, my friends, have been moved to committee. I am so excited that this bill has been pushed because it was idling for a while. Remember, we were talking about these education bills that we wait, they go through.
identical bills. Um, House Bill 457, authored by Representative Middleton, who also created this bill. It's to provide a child with a disability um, from a low-income household to help educational options. It, just to give you a reminder of what that is. The child must attend a public school or public charter school that is eligible to participate in a school district SPED program. Um, it is basically money that is given to uh, the child in order to support them on textbooks, purchases, private school uh, tuition, educational therapy. It is, a, I feel it's a great uh, bill, but that is my opinion. If you are interested and you want to you know, know more about it, contact your representative first and let them know this bill. It is Senate Bill 1968. I will put this information. Follow us on the text, the National Parents Union Texas page. I will actually have that update as long as all the other bills. Shay Mackin will also have all that information there so that you can have updates of these bills and where to look at it to get more information and contact your elected officials to let them know, hey, I support this bill because once it goes to floor and they vote, you want your elected officials to say yes to this, not no. So that, and then the last thing that I want to remind everybody is the T, the Texas SSES program. And you're like, what is the Texas SSE program? <laughs> it is a supplemental special education services. Deadline is coming up June 30th, mi gente, June 30th. You can go to the TA website. There you apply for the program. This is a program. Now, this is the one that Governor Abbott has had created for everybody where this program is offering $1,500 to families, children that have been affected by COVID that was in a public school, and that it also includes a public charter school. That information is on our page, as well as My Child, My Voice page. I did post that today. It also has a link for you to create the account if you want that. It has a lot of Q&A questions. Mi gente se habla en español, tiene toda la información en español. So you have all of that there that will give you that information. I highly recommend everybody to apply for it. I myself have um, family members um, that have disabilities. So we were able to walk through that process. It was simple. It wasn't as hard as you think it is. If you need help, reach out to Families Empowered here in Texas. They are in all different parts of uh, Texas. They will walk you through it and they have somebody that is bilingual. Mi gente se necesita ayuda. La gente de Familias Empowered. They have somebody in Spanish that will help you with that. So please reach out to them. I will have that information as well in the comment field. I encourage everybody to do it. There is only so much money out there. This can be really effective for you. You use this for your child, whether it be textbooks, therapy. It is a great program that the governor had set up and it does not take away money from the public school system. That is a plus. So I hope everybody does um, do and apply for that one. Now let's get excited with our guest um, to welcome our next guest. She is a native Louisianan, but no stranger to Texas. Um, I had the pleasure of knowing her as a champion of student choice and success with a career at Yes Prep Public Charter School. I got to shout out Yes Prep. I feel like everybody, I've made everybody there. And you know, it's, it's just awesome. Got to say that here in Houston. Um, Chantel George is, has 10 years of college access and success experience in areas of higher education, K-12. You know, I can go on and on and on. How about we bring her up? Chantel, welcome. Hello, hello. How's Hi. it going? I was actually, you know, Wendy, taking notes as you were talking about all of the bills and all of the things that were up to date. I was like, let me, let me write some of those things down. So excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, thanks for coming on. I'm so excited that you're here and learning about the work that you are doing on a national level, as well as, you know, coming, you know, helping still parents and organizations and schools here in Texas. So yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> Texas is, is close to my heart. I, I am born and raised Louisiana, currently based here in New Orleans, but as you know, lived in Houston for about eight and a half years. 
um, where I spent most of my professional career um, in Texas and still have ties there with, uh, of course, the work in education. So um, Texas will always be uh, a second home, <laughs> a second home to me. Um, I felt like I became a full adult because <laughs> I moved to Texas right after uh, college graduation. So um so it's good to connect and of course you know yeah shout out to yes prep we met so many amazing people and we're still in touch with so many folks as everyone has kind of gone to do different amazing things in texas and in other places so it's always good to come back to to the roots and and have a conversation especially about uh education which is so important and and i'm excited to to chat about all kinds of things i feel like we're going to talk about during this this next hour so happy to be here Yes, I'm so excited. And I do have to shout out, I mean, because the one boss I think that uh, we all knew um, is uh, Donald Commence. Donald Commence. Oh, my goodness. And he's watching, you know. He, he is. He in- <laughs> Hi, Donald. <laughs> hey, Donald. Thank you so much for being a great boss and teaching us great things. And look what we're Absolutely. doing now. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, I talk to him often. <laughs> So let's get started. So for those of us that don't know you, Chantel, please give us a little bit more information about your background. I know you personally and the work you did at Yes Prep and beyond. Tell us more sure. about you. Yeah, yeah. So Chantel George, again, born and raised in Louisiana. Um, I went to LSU as an undergraduate student. Um, I studied biochem at the time. I had this idea that I was going to be a doctor. And uh, that changed, I would want to say, probably between junior and senior year. Um, I started to have, I guess, the you know college crisis of like, what am I going to do <laughs> when I graduate? Um, but I was highly involved. Um, I was in every organization. I did a lot of leadership activities um, as an undergraduate student. And I didn't really know that higher ed was like a thing that you could pursue. But I was always doing those things. And my mentors at the time were folks that were knee deep in higher ed. Um, and so when I graduated, uh, Wendy, I finished, you know, with a biochem degree. I did not want to move back home. And I was like, you know, what am I going to do? And so I had at the time an amazing academic advisor, Carla Lemoyne, who worked at LSU for years. And I went to her office probably a few weeks before graduation. And I was like, Carla, what am I going to do with this degree? Like, you know, and so she was like, well, let's, let's figure it out. Let's try to find you a job. Um, and so I really lucked out and wanted to move to Houston because it was still drivable from home. And I had other family members who lived in Houston. Um, and there's a big LSU alumni based in Houston. So I felt like it was a good fit. And I ended up getting a job at MD Anderson. So what a lot of people don't know about me is I started off as a cancer researcher uh, for two years right outside of, of graduating from college um, as a medical technologist. And so that was a really wow. amazing experience. Yeah, I still keep my license current. Um, <laughs> go figure. They called me all throughout the pandemic if I wanted to come back to work in the lab. Um, but nevertheless, it was a really awesome experience. I was the youngest person who worked in a lab and so felt very um, fulfilled to have such a great opportunity right outside of college, but I would come home and still feel unfulfilled because I knew I wasn't really in my purpose. Um, And so after that, about two years later, I decided to enroll or apply to the um, higher education program at the University of Houston to get my master's degree um, and also got a job at U of H. And so I transitioned out um, into full-blown education, higher ed. I made $29,000 a year, uh, but I was the happiest person it ever. I had about 600 first year students on my caseload um, who were all in different spaces trying to figure out and navigate, as you can imagine, the first year of college. Um, and I became the advisor, the coach, the mentor, the therapist, the big sister, the cousin, the everything. Um, and it was really exciting. And, and at that moment, I knew that, that that I was stepping into the flow of like what I was put on this earth to do. Um, and <laughs> since then, it's been 10 years of working in the field from higher education to to K through 12, to charter systems like Yes Prep, to nonprofits, um, and now to managing my own consulting firm. And so have really seen this college and career readiness field in different perspectives um, and really have a passion for our youth. They are phenomenal. Our young people are out there rocking and rolling and um, they are the future, right? They are what we're hoping to to, to do well and, and take us to the next level in the world. And so I've had the opportunity to work with some phenomenal students 